Hi, uh, so today we're, I'm going to be stepping you guys through how to uh, get SSH working on Visual Studio Code for CS225. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to the UIC CS225 website. And now we're going to go to resources, uh, get in CS225. So this first part is going to be setting up Git, and then we'll be using that, um, including a repository inside the EWS SSH. So first of all, we're going to um, Get our repository here. So let's open that in a new tab. This is my repository. Right? So you guys can check it's at 225, fall 21, and then your net ID should be there. So then what we're going to do is so once we've uh, had this, we're going to copy and paste this, this link. Um, actually, not paste it yet, but we're going to copy it for now. And we're going to have to get cloned. So how do we get cloned? Well, uh, let's go back to uh, the website again. It's going to be a, a different uh, Thing on your own machine, working with SSH here. Uh, I don't know if they uh, have this on here. No worries. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, I'm on a Windows computer right now, but this should be the same for Mac. You're going to go to extensions um, on Visual Studio Code. Yours may be a, the purple version of Studio, which is fine. Uh, blue or purple is fine. You're going to look up remote SSH. Search that up. You'll see an install button right here. I've already had it installed, so you won't see it. Uh, once you've installed, you should see this thing pop up. You may already have it. That's fine. You go to the remote explorer here. You're going to go, and some of you guys may have uh, Docker containers or whatever. Um, choose the SSH. Uh, choose the SSH up here. There's going to be a thing up here for that. Um, you're going to. Uh, you won't see these things there. You're going to. Um, Mouse over SSH targets, press the plus button, insert your net ID at linux.uws.illinois.edu. This is what we call our SSH target, right? So this is where we want to SSH to. I'm going to press enter there. It's going to say, hey, where do you want to save this? Which configuration file? We're going to press the first one inside our users directory. You guys will have something different, but users should all be the same. We're going to press that. Now it's going to save. As you guys see here, there's going to be a thing that pops up that says linux.ews.illinois.edu. This is this means that we've defined in our configuration file that there is a computer that if we ever want to access, is going to be named this. And this is the, that's the computer we're going to want to access, right? So uh, we're going to connect to host a new window. We're going to press this just by mousing over it. You'll see it. Uh, you guys should see a new window that pops up. Um, this is a, and sometimes some of you guys might see like a allow or not allow for private networks or whatever. Just click allow is fine. You'll see this pop up. Um, press Linux. Um, okay. We're going to uh, close remote and retry. Retry real quick. Oops. Oops. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's why. So let me just delete this. There we go. Press this. It's going to ask us for Linux, which will find. I'm going to enter in my password. It's going to be the same one as the Illinois password. Wait a second. It's setting it up right here. Uh, I'm going to wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oops. All right, there we go. I think that should have worked. Yeah, so we select, selected Linux as the platform we want to use, which is for the most case, it is easiest to use Linux, even though you guys may be on a Mac or a Windows computer. Um, and then, so yeah, that's good. Then we're going to uh, open folder, or sorry, we're gonna open up a terminal, new terminal right here, back up here. 
We're, as you guys can see, if you guys don't know, if, or if you haven't seen terminal before, uh, what this means on the left hand side um, of your cursor, cursor is this white rectangle thing, it is my user net ID, right? Um, at some Linux machine that I'm using um, from the uh, school. So this is like a server. Some of you guys might have like different numbers here, right? So this is the computer I'm using, this part that I've highlighted. This second part right here, this tilde, is going to denote where I am on that computer file path, right? So this means the user file path. So I'm at the user file path and that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hit clone here. Um, the thing that I wanted to do and we're going to rename it CSC 25 bit or something like that, right? That's what it says on the website, but that's what that command does. So it just clones it with a URL and then uh, we rename it with Git. So we're gonna press enter, it's closed into there. It's gonna want our username for Git, and this is gonna be your Illinois stuff. So net ID and then your net ID password. All right, and it says, I've appeared to clone an empty repository. That's completely fine. Um, Cause we're gonna be uh, doing a something a little bit different with it. So we've cloned a repository. We can check that by pressing LS. You guys will see that uh, I have a bunch of stuff uh, that are old, but um, this is the stuff that I just made, CS225 git. In order to go into the folder, we're going to press CD, which stands for change directory, CS225 git. Press enter, press ls to list everything in there. You see it's empty, right? So it's fine. Um, that's all good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the add release repository as remote. And here, um, I actually implore you guys to actually do, these, the, do this optional step. It'll help. And it'll be less annoying when you guys need to push. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. You guys can just uh, follow this command and, um, uh, and do it and it'll store it for you. So now we're gonna run this command. We're gonna copy it, paste it over here, press enter. And note that I'm pasting this and pressing enter inside my Git repository, okay? So just wanna, wanna make sure that you guys are uh, in the right uh, directory. Now that we've done that, what we're going to do is run these two other commands. So, and so what this command did was it added basically um, another uh, a, a, a sort of reference to another repository. And you guys will be using that repository and pulling that code into your repository, right? So that's like the base code. You're going to now put it inside your own folder. Um, so we're going to fetch the release, right? Which means, let's see. All right, real quick. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're going to fetch a repository, which has a bunch of new stuff, right, that they've made, right, but it hasn't put it inside our folder yet. If we press LS, we can see it's still empty, right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to merge what, what we need to use, okay? So this is the, like, a boilerplate code for merging, but we're going to take the releases lab intro. Right? It's also MP intro, which you guys, if you guys, were, when you're doing the MP, you would want to, you know, change this lab intro part into MP intro. Um, and then uh, let's uh, have a good uh, git commit, uh, git, sorry, git merge message, uh, merging lab intro, okay? You do that, we're gonna press enter. There we go. So how do we know if it works? Press ls. There we go, you guys see that? So now it's a uh, lab intro is inside our 225 GitHub folder, right? So uh, if you guys wanna do, uh, like check it out, then you guys can CD into that, right? Check it out, press ls, you see there's a bunch of stuff in there already for you, cool. All right, so how do I actually start coding and, and start and get to some people to do code? Right now it's in the command line. So what you're gonna do is gonna open folder right here. Uh, open folder, you're gonna choose the folder. So some of you guys may start off at a different path, but the idea is yeah, go to user 225 git, which is where we made the folder, if you guys remember, and then lab intro. Um, you guys can actually press okay here if you wanted to, but the more projects you have, the better it is for you to actually go into the specific project you're working on and pressing that. Otherwise, it'll load everything onto RAM or, or something like that, and um, it'll slow down your computer. So let's go lab intro there. Um, this is fine because um, we want to work in lab intro. So we're going to press OK. It's going to reload. Um, I guess it needs my password again. All right. Wait a little bit. And then, all right, we're going to press yes, I trust the authors because that's uh, us, me. Um, and it's a little bit slow, but um, but uh, you guys should uh, eventually get something over here um, that has all the files there. 
Oops, I guess I, uh, there we go, something like this, where you have all the files inside lab intro. And you guys can cross-reference this with a release repository of CS225 on the GitHub website, but you don't need to. Um, so you guys can start playing around with this. So um, let's pretend, let's go to lab intro real quick. Um, let's say right here we have this, right? I create spotlight return image, right? So let's just pretend we uh, uh, set image as a new PNG. Something like this. Let's see if this is working. I don't know. You might want to change something or let's see. There we go, save it real quick. Sure. All right, so now you've changed something in your piece of code, right? Um, or, or theoretically, you're completing the assignment, right? Um, so how do we actually push this onto GitHub, right? So we have this, we're going to git add dash u, which this u, if you guys see over here real quick, uh, before this was all white, everything was white here. But now, after I've changed this file, lab intro.cpp has an N next to it. What does that mean? It means it's uh, marked uh, or, or changed, right? Um, and it's a different, like someone, someone, you know, the file has been changed since the last commit. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, can you add my changes onto the next commit? And we're going to do that. It's going to add, as you guys can see here, this will, uh, uh, this will, this will all be the same, I guess. And then kit. Uh, make a message for it, which is uh, add or that. All right, so one file change, right? One insertion deletion. Now that M's gone. And then git origin master. Okay, username again. Has so this is how we, you know, do all our stuff, uh, and to push it onto the actual live server, uh, git commit basically just says yes, I want to actually make those changes. I'm sure of it. Yes, here's why I made those changes, right? So here I said, that, oh, it's because we just changed the lab intro or something like that. And then when we git push origin master says, hey, I want you to push all our changes, all our commit, our committed changes, right? We just don't want to like push any change because sometimes we may do something or in the middle of doing something that we don't want pushed. Um, so we're just going to do like a git, uh, you know, after we're done committing, it's gonna push all the commits onto master on the server. If we go back to our GitHub now, dev, and note that it's github-dev.cs.illinois. We go to, it's full, um, our fall 21 uh, CSC 25 stuff. You guys will see, oh, look, it was an empty repository before, but now it has a lab intro. You can press into that. You know, it has all that stuff in it. Let's see if our change on live intro was actually made. Uh, but as you guys can see here, right, there it is, right, line 64. So that's pretty much it to get it working. Um, one more thing I would want, uh, want to go over real quick is uh, theoretic. So when you get all this set up and you want to test, right, you will run make, right? And you should see something like this, right? This is because I actually haven't completed the assignment yet. Um, so it's complaining about not knowing what HSLA pixel is. Um, but this means that it's working. You may get something along the lines of like, oh, module LLVM or like need something like that. Um, that's going to be a, a bit different. Uh, you can just uh, follow, I think the lab intro has it. Uh, just run this command. Um, so I think this is mainly for, um, oh, I don't know. I, did, I guess, um, yeah, if you see this, if you run make and it doesn't work, this is what you need. You need the newer version of LVM, I guess. Um, and then make test is the same thing. Uh, it won't, nothing will happen um, because it is, uh, you haven't made the uh, functions yet. So there you go. And then uh, this thing, this so this grayed out means that it is uh, ignored automatically by Git. Uh, what does that mean? So when you add files, um, or when you and when you commit, right? This will not be there. This will not exist. And when you push, right? This will not exist on the live server because this is 
not only is it pertaining specifically like to your, your code and maybe some bugs or whatever or create machine right so like we don't want that on there um, in case it messes up with anything as well so that's why it's ignored and so it's grayed out um, and you guys, for those of you who are interested, um, this is why. So there we go. That's it. Hope it helped.